Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have an updated review for you. Back early on in my channel's history, like one of the very first detailed reviews I did was on M. Graham watercolors. Um, today I'm going to be doing an updated review since I've acquired some new colors since then and give you my thoughts on them after having used them for quite some time. But if you are new to the channel or missed that early review, I will go ahead and put a link up here in the corner as well as down in the description below so that you can find that in-depth look at the pigments that they sent. M. Graham originally sent me nine colors to try out and review on the channel, and those are the colors between my two thumbs here. And then over the years, I've also added some additional colors myself. Um, just as a quick aside, I've had people ask me about this palette before, so I wanted to go ahead and show you on the back. That's all the information I have on it. Um, I picked it up at a local art store. Uh, Imgrams especially are very sticky because of the honey they contain, which is great for painting, um, but in an open air palette and a cat in the house, they collect a lot of dust and a lot of cat hair. So I just tape this piece of arches paper to the side and I keep it covered when I'm not using it. So where did all the other colors come from? Well, I have my lovely viewers, Ophelia and Darcy, to thank for that. They have sent me a couple of samples um, over the last couple of months, so I've been able to try out some more of their colors without heavily investing in lots and lots of tubes. Uh, I put together this little palette that is almost exclusively Imgrams. The only exception is this full pan of yellow is um, a mission gold color, and that was just because it was a full pan of paint. I didn't want to waste it and uh, it has a very similar consistency to Imgram, so I plopped it in there. Um, here's a little overview of the colors that are in here. I think all of them are here except for the Prussian Blue and the Ultramarine, and that was only because I couldn't fit them in there physically. <laughs> I could have fit them in there if these full pans weren't here, but uh, I had filled those up for a different palette originally and then decided to do this instead. So. I'll use them up, hopefully, at some point <laughs> in my life, and then uh, I can kind of re-evaluate from there. Now, I'm not gonna be doing like a full co color comparison with my swatch binder for this because I've already done the review, but I did wanna point out a couple colors in here that were um, really impressive to me, and one of them was this Anthracridone, anthracridone blue, and that's PB60, and this is the deepest, darkest, most stable uh, in terms of color shift PB60 that I've ever seen. So I will go ahead and show you those real quick. So here are the other PB60 samples I have. I don't have too many of them, um, but I do have Daniel Smith's, and you all know how much I love Daniel Smith paint. But if we put these two side by side, there is zero question about which one is more vibrant and, you know, bold and has a much, much sturdier sh uh, drying shift. So the painting I'm going to do today is actually going to be based on this color because I was so impressed with how deep and dark and beautiful it is. So we will get to that in just a moment. So the next one that I want to talk about is this cobalt teal, and I finally purchased this tube of paint after two years of, you know, researching and thinking I wasn't going to add it, and then realizing what a beautiful color it is to use for mixtures, but it's really expensive, and I don't like the granulation, so what do I do? So if you remember back to my porcelain palette setup video, I actually mixed my own kind of turquoise color from Amazonite Genuine and Turner's Turquoise. Um, it's a little bit more green on the green side, but I, um, I was trying to make something that I would like in my palette more so than a cobalt teal. I've tried the Daniel Smith uh, cobalt teal stick, which is in the middle here, which I didn't really care for. It was really, really granular. You can see the Turner's Turquoise on its own is actually a pretty bluish color, even though it's the same pigment. Um, and then Coors Cobalt Teal is made from PG6, uh, PG50, and that's a pretty color as well. That was one I had just uh, recently tried too. A core review is coming soon, don't worry. Um, but this would have been like my second choice, but cores are really, really expensive. And so I eventually settled on this Cobalt Teal, which is, has this beautiful, soft granulation. It's a nice sky blue with a tint of green. And, um, yeah, I really enjoy using it. I've used it a lot for my World Water Color Month with my beach uh, photos in particular, doing the ocean and sea scenes like that. While I have this out, I can show you the turquoise when it's compared to 
the four other kind of turquoisey colors that I have. It's closest, I think, to Mission Gold's Peacock Blue, uh, and then gets a little bit further away from the My Mary Blue and the Daniel Smith versions of Thalo Turquoise and Turquoise Green. It's a really beautiful color on its own. I think my favorite is still probably the Daniel Smith. I like the green in this one, um, but I also really like this color too. So I actually don't have any other Viridian at all to compare this to. This is PG-18, um, and I was really curious to try M. Grandma's version. I've tried it, the Daniel Smith one on the sampler card, and it was hard as a rock and incredibly difficult to paint with. So um, I've always been really hesitant to try it. This is M. Grandma's version, and the reason I asked Darcy, she had it in her collection, and asked me what I wanted to try. And I was like, well, the Viridian would be nice because M. Grandma's paints are so juicy, and it is pretty easy to rewet, especially comparatively to other brands. Um, it does have a very, very um, heavy granulation, particularly for Ingram paints. Ingrams in general are not very uh, granular. So um, it's like a phthalo blue, but it's much softer and it granulates and it's liftable and non-staining. So I'm excited to try this out in some paintings. Then there was Terra Rosa, which uh, I was really excited to try. Before I looked and saw that it was PR 101, I was like, oh, that's such a pretty soft red. I'm sure it would make really great, like, cat noses and things like that. Really, really soft red color. And I was like, oh, this is so pretty. And previously, I hadn't had any, like, Venetian red or English red in my collection because I just don't um, typically like really opaque colors. But then I realized when I saw that it was PR 101, I was like, oh, this is probably... In fact, just like <laughs> uh, Indian Red or, or whatnot. So here's Mission Gold's version of Indian Red. Very, very similar in hue. The M. Graham does glaze a lot more strongly and uh, is a beautiful color. And I'm actually really enjoying working with it. So I'm actually considering picking up a tube for myself, but I promised myself I would go through the little pan of paint that I have um, that Darcy sent before I go ahead and... Uh, try and, and dive into that. I think if I'm only using it for like little cat noses and everything, it should probably actually last me quite some time. <laughs> the only other color I really wanted to talk about was the sap green, and here I've got uh, my little miscellaneous green samples here with Daniel Smith's original version on the left, which is my absolute favorite. Um, their new formula that doesn't contain quinacridone gold, which is my second favorite. Uh, and then we've got Sennelier's, which I don't like as much, but it's pretty neat. It uh, granulates uh, a lot more than the other sap greens that I've seen do. And then here is M. Graham's version next to those other colors. It's definitely lighter. Um, it, I guess it glazes a little bit cleaner if we're looking at just the, the crossover glaze area, but overall I feel like it is a bit more flat and is a little bit more lifeless than some of these other mixes. The reason I love Daniel Smith so much is it is made with those quinacridone colors and they just pop off the page and they're just so beautiful and I don't mind using them from the tube versus uh, mixing up a green to use versus sap green from M. Graham. I don't think I would want to use it by itself. I would definitely want to add another blue or gold to kind of liven it up a bit. So overall, I really love M. Graham and up with Daniel Smith, they're two of my favorite watercolor brands out there. Um, there are some things that I prefer from the Daniel Smith line, primarily like their yellows and reds I prefer in Daniel Smith, but when it comes to blues, I don't think I have anyone that I would rate higher than M. Graham. Their blues are absolutely gorgeous. Their ultramarine doesn't granulate as heavily as a lot of other brands, which for me is a benefit. I don't like super, super granular paint, so I really enjoy that. The Prussian blue is the most vivid Prussian blue I've ever seen in any brand, and that's the one that lives on my main palette. Um, the cobalt teal now lives on my main palette as well. I took out that Amazonite mixture that I told you about and replaced it with the cobalt teal. Um, I've got a chunk of that somewhere, <laughs> my old mixture. Um, usually I try and run out a well before I replace it, but I was too impatient and wanted to put that in there. Uh, when I do run out of my uh, Mission Gold's Magello Blue, which um, I go through pretty quickly. I'm definitely going to be replacing it with Anthropridone Blue because this is just so much more gorgeous. And uh, let's see, some other things. The Raw Umber from Imgram I really like. Unfortunately, the art store that I was at when I was trying to purchase Raw Umber was out, so uh, I ended up getting Sennelier instead, but I do like the Imgram version a lot better. The Sennelier's uh, granulates really, really heavily, and again, I prefer the Imgram version because of that. And yeah, I think that is about it. Since this is kind of a throwback episode to uh, re-reviewing the M. Grams, which are fairly early on, I'm also going to 
take my inspiration from this nice dark blue paint and, and do kind of a repaint of one of the first videos. I think it was the first video I ever uploaded to the channel, which were some little galaxies. Uh, Eva's been doing a lot of galaxies too lately, and uh, I was figuring, well, I'm so inspired by this dark blue color, and I haven't done them for so long. Let's go ahead and dive into that. So before I do that, I will go ahead and swatch out all of the colors on a piece of paper so that you guys can all see that. I know some people really like to watch the swatching, um, or you can fast forward to the demo painting at the end. So I just want to thank Imgram once again for originally sending me these colors so that I could um, learn more about them originally, and then also to Darcy and Ophelia for um, kind of supplementing my collection. And I just, I hope to continue to add more Imgram paints to my line. So. I don't think I could recommend them highly enough. Um, they're also, for me, a local company-ish. They're <laughs> based out of Oregon and I'm in California, um, so they're fairly easy to get here. And um, they're an eco-friendly company, so there's nothing not to like for me. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today. Again, stay tuned for those swatches and the galaxy painting, and I will see you next time.